In 2025, scientists proved something deeply unsettling. An entire human population disappeared so completely that no living person carries their DNA. No descendants. No genetic trace. Total erasure. This wasn't speculation. It was demonstrated using ancient DNA in a 2025 study published in Science Advances. And that was only one result. The same year, geneticists mapped a 20,000-kilometer human migration across two continents, uncovered evidence of contact across the Pacific centuries before Europeans, and detected DNA from a human species so ancient it split from our lineage nearly a million years ago. A species we've never found, never named, never seen. Human history didn't just get clearer in 2025. It got more fragile. If you're watching Stone and Bone for evidence over myth and uncomfortable truths over comforting stories, subscribe. Because what genetics revealed this year forces one question we can't avoid. How many human stories ended without anyone remembering they existed? In early 2025, researchers published one of the most comprehensive genetic reconstructions of human migration ever assembled. Using ancient DNA and large-scale population genetics, they traced a continuous human lineage stretching nearly 20,000 kilometers from northern Asia into the far southern edge of South America. For decades, scientists argued over how humans reached the Americas. Some favored an inland route through retreating ice sheets. Others argued for a coastal migration along the Pacific shoreline. Genetics didn't end every debate, but it did something more decisive. It showed that the first people to enter the Americas were not one uniform group moving south together. Almost immediately, the genetic signal splintered. Within a few thousand years of entry, at least four distinct founding populations emerged. One lineage spread deep into the Amazon basin. Another settled the Andes. A third occupied the Gran Chaco. A fourth pushed south into Patagonia. These groups weren't just heading in different directions. They were already drifting apart biologically. Modern indigenous populations still carry DNA that traces directly back to these Ice Age founders. Visible in ancient maternal lineages such as mtDNA haplogroups, A2, B2, C1, and D1. Despite thousands of years of upheaval, colonization, and demographic collapse, that genetic thread was never fully severed. But the same data revealed something far less comforting. Along this vast migration route are sharp genetic constrictions, bottlenecks, moments when populations shrank so severely that entire branches of genetic diversity were lost forever. These were not brief setbacks. They were permanent changes, locking in genetic futures shaped by survival under extreme pressure. The map didn't just show where humans went. It showed how close many groups came to disappearing entirely. And the consequences of those moments didn't end in the Ice Age. A population bottleneck is often described as a drop in numbers. Genetics shows it's far more severe than that. When a population collapses, it doesn't just lose people, it loses options. One of the clearest places this appears is in immune system genes, especially those involved in recognizing pathogens. High diversity allows a population to respond to unfamiliar diseases. Low diversity means fewer biological defenses. In several South American populations, particularly those that remained isolated near the continent's southern extremes, researchers found dramatic reductions in immune gene diversity. Some groups were left with only a narrow range of variants, the genetic imprint of surviving repeated demographic collapses in harsh environments. These were not short-term setbacks. They were permanent changes. Every bottleneck forced a trade-off. Survival in the moment, at the cost of flexibility in the future. Over thousands of years, those compromises accumulated, shaping how entire populations respond to disease even today. This reframes what survival actually means. Living through a crisis does not mean emerging unchanged. Sometimes, it means carrying a quieter vulnerability forward. And this leads to a deeper question. One genetics forces us to confront. If a population survives by narrowing its biological options, is that resilience or is it simply survival on borrowed time? Share your thoughts in the comments. This is one of those questions science raises but can't fully answer. Bottlenecks show how close humanity came to extinction. 
One discovery in 2025 shows that, in at least one case, extinction happened anyway. High on the Bogota Altiplano, in present-day Colombia, archaeologists had long known of ancient hunter-gatherer communities who lived there more than 6,000 years ago. They hunted deer, gathered plants, and buried their dead with care. For decades, they were assumed to be early ancestors of later populations in the region. Ancient DNA shattered that assumption. When researchers sequenced genomes from these burials, they uncovered a deeply divergent human lineage, one that split early during the settlement of South America. And then, around 2,000 years ago, that lineage vanishes completely. Not diluted. Not absorbed. Gone. Later farming populations, genetically linked to Central America, replaced them so thoroughly that no detectable genetic connection remains in modern populations. This wasn't a gradual blending. It was a biological dead end. Genetic replacement does not require a single catastrophic event. It can unfold quietly through sustained demographic pressure, disease exposure, higher fertility, or social exclusion. Over generations, one population's genes simply stop being passed on. What makes this discovery disturbing is how invisible the process is. Archaeology still finds tools, campsites, burials, traces of daily life. But genetically, it's as if these people never existed. Culture can persist in the ground while biology disappears entirely. And that realization forces an uncomfortable truth. Human history is not just a story of movement and survival. It is also a record of who was erased and how completely that erasure can happen without anyone noticing at the time. After the genetic erasure revealed in Colombia, the next discovery feels almost impossible. In southern South America, across Patagonia and the Pampas, researchers analyzed ancient genomes spanning nearly 10,000 years. What they found defies one of the most consistent patterns in global human history. The same core genetic lineages appear again and again, century after century, for more than 8,500 years. This continuity is not abstract. It is measurable. Maternal lineages specific to the region, including mtDNA haplogroups D1G and D1J, appear in the earliest samples and persist all the way to the period just before European contact. In most regions of the world, this does not happen. Europe was repeatedly reshaped by farming expansions and later migrations. East Asia shows layer upon layer of genetic turnover. Even remote islands tend to reveal waves of change. But here, the population held. This wasn't stagnation. These societies adapted to shifting climates, developed new technologies, and reorganized socially. Yet genetically, they remained strikingly consistent. Geography alone cannot explain this. Patagonia is vast, but it is not sealed off. The more convincing explanation lies in social structure. Marriage networks stayed local. Kinship rules reinforced boundaries. Interaction did not automatically mean inclusion. Over thousands of years, cultural systems quietly controlled who could belong. This overturns a comfortable assumption that human groups inevitably blend when they meet. Sometimes, they don't. Sometimes, survival depends on not mixing at all. What do you think protects a population more over deep time? Geography, technology, or social rules? Drop your answer in the comments. Few places have been used as a warning story more often than Easter Island. For decades, it was presented as a civilization that destroyed itself. Trees cut down, resources exhausted, society collapsed long before Europeans arrived. It was neat, it was dramatic, and it was wrong. In 2025, geneticists reconstructed the population history of the island using ancient DNA. Instead of finding evidence of a pre-contact collapse, they found stability. The population endured until European arrival, but the real shock came from ancestry. Every individual analyzed carried a clear signal of Native American ancestry. Genetic modeling placed that contact centuries before Europeans entered the Pacific. This means Polynesian voyagers and South American peoples met, intermarried, and had children long before the modern world connected the globe. The island wasn't isolated. It was selectively connected. And that raises a harder question. If contact happened, why didn't it spread? Why does this genetic signal appear on Rapa Nui, but not widely across Polynesia or South America? This wasn't a civilization that collapsed. 
it was one that controlled its connections. Do you think Polynesians reached South America, or did South Americans cross the Pacific? And why didn't it go further? Share your thoughts. If Easter Island reveals unexpected long-distance contact, near Oceania reveals the opposite. In Papua New Guinea and nearby islands, ancient genomes spanning roughly 2,500 years show populations living side by side, trading and interacting, yet remaining genetically distinct far longer than expected. Papuan-related groups carried deep ancestry stretching back more than 50,000 years. Later arrivals brought East Asian-related ancestry and new technologies. But instead of rapid blending, genetic mixing unfolded slowly, sometimes over centuries. Proximity didn't matter. Contact didn't guarantee connection. Language barriers, marriage customs, and social identity acted as invisible walls stronger than geography. People could share coastlines, exchange goods, and still remain biologically separate. This forces a rethink of how human history works. Movement alone doesn't shape populations. Restraint does too. If culture can block genes for centuries, then many population boundaries in the past may be completely invisible archaeologically. And that realization prepares us for the final discovery. Because the last surprise of 2025 isn't about separation. It's about a human presence we can't see at all. For most of the last decade, Denisovans existed as a genetic shadow a few fragments of bone from a Siberian cave, a strange DNA signal showing up in modern populations across Asia and Oceania. No clear face, no clear range, just a mystery buried in genomes. In 2025, that changed. Using protein analysis instead of DNA, scientists identified a massive human jawbone found in Taiwan as Denisovan. DNA rarely survives in warm, humid environments like this, but ancient proteins can persist far longer and those proteins told a clear story. Denisovans weren't confined to one cold cave. They were spread across East Asia. This single identification quietly rewrote Denisovan geography. It also exposed a bias in how we reconstruct human history. Archaeology favors places where bones survive. Human populations didn't. Entire groups can vanish from the fossil record not because they were rare, but because their environments erased the evidence. What we call absence is often just preservation failure. And this realization leads directly to the most unsettling finding of all. Hidden inside Denisovan genomes, researchers notice something deeply abnormal. A portion of Denisovan DNA does not match modern humans. It does not match Neanderthals. It comes from a population that split from our lineage nearly one million years ago. This wasn't a statistical fluke. Genetic modeling suggests repeated interbreeding between Denisovans and this unknown group over hundreds of thousands of years. Scientists call them a super-archaic population. The term is cautious. The implication is not. This was a human species that lived alongside others for vast stretches of time. They survived. They reproduced. They left genetic traces that still echo today. And yet, we have never found a confirmed fossil. No skull. No skeleton. No tools we can confidently assign. The problem isn't imagination. It's geography. The regions where these populations likely lived are some of the worst places on Earth for ancient preservation. Heat, humidity, acidic soils, bones dissolve, DNA disappears. Only faint genetic signatures remain, carried inside other humans. Genetics is telling us something archaeology may never be able to show. Some branches of the human family tree exist only as molecular ghosts. Taken together, the discoveries of 2025 don't tell a comforting story. They show that human survival is fragile. That entire populations can vanish without descendants. That others can persist almost unchanged for thousands of years and that our species is intertwined with beings we may never identify. DNA has become an archive of lives never written down, of journeys never recorded, of extinctions that left no monuments behind. Human history is not a straight line of progress. It is a balance between survival, erasure, and chance. 
some of your ancestors didn't leave stories. They left molecules. If you want more evidence-driven stories like this, where genetics and archaeology strip history down to its deepest layers, subscribe to Stone and Bone. There are still entire chapters of human history hiding inside us, waiting to be uncovered.